sophisticated, elegant, and armed with sharp mental acuity. That pretty much sums up the Yi Yo or Wood Rooster Pillar. Welcome back as we continue our series exploring the 60 pillars. Thank you for watching. My name is Pauline Cheng and I am a life coach who uses Chinese metaphysics to empower, not to disempower. And I think it is so apt that uh, our icon for the Yi Yo or Wood Rooster is none other than Miss Oprah Winfrey herself. And through this pillar, we are going to explore the importance of strategic networking. The gift of strategic networking is, of course, not merely confined to the Yi Yo pillar. Right? Any one of the 60 pillars can learn this art, but the Yi Yo, soft and weak on the outside, but possessing of an inner drive and action-oriented approach, perfectly embodies this ability. So in this video, let's, let's explore the many facets of uh, strategic networking, but brace yourself, this will be a little longer than usual. Wherever the Yi Yo is to be found in your chart, you already have the natural gift of strategic networking. Even if you don't have the Yi Yo in your chart, well guys, look, it can be learned. Okay, so the Yi Yo is usually likened, my mic just fell down. The Yi Yo is usually likened to a man-made plant-like ornament or a potted plant. Think of, think of a bonsai. Now this pretty plant is not grown to be hidden in a jungle, right? It's meant to stand out. It's meant to draw in admiration. It's meant to be appreciated. Smart, friendly, uh, witty and charming. The Yi Yo likes nothing better than a spot in the sun. So, Let's go to the strengths. Now, a Yi Wood Day Master, anyone, always possesses some degree of charm and elegance. You know, like a pretty flower. Okay? So, by itself, this Day Master is already attractive. And then, okay, this uh, flowering plant is literally seated on a peach blossom star. What does this do? It attracts many friends and admirers your way. Sounds good. Okay? And this combination means that the Yi Yo Day Master typically looks sophisticated and non-threatening. But watch out. Seated on your seven killing star, the Yi Yo or Wood Rooster combines the swiftness of the Yin Wood with the precision of the Yin Metal in your modus operandi. In other words, this formation represents your mental acuity. Now, cleverness certainly plays a major role in making optimum use of the Yi Yo pillar. Now, honing this sharp mental acuity is how the Yi Yo survives in what it perceives to be a dog eat dog world. From a classical point of view, from a classical point of view, this could be detrimental as it is uh, equated with guile and deception. But again, I must ask. Is guile and deception always a bad thing? Before we judge, how about we replace those two words with one that uh, is prized in today's world, perhaps even a little overused, the word strategic. Now, we'll talk more about this at the end when we get down to yi yo, but better. But first, let's take a look at your vulnerabilities. Okay, your sin metal killing star that brings you such courage, drive, and audacity is also your weakness because the influence element is the element that controls us. This sin metal killing star of yours could literally crush the strengths of the Yi Wood Day Master. How would you know if your sin metal killing star is too strong? The first clue would be a lack of self-confidence. The dark side of the uh, Yi Yo Day Master tends to be touchy and emotional. Right? While that itself is not really a big problem, the bigger issue here is that uh, you would tend to be too damned aware of your own vulnerabilities. You waste a lot of time trying to cover up your perceived weaknesses instead of playing up to your strengths. Also, being a rootless pillar, there is always a danger of becoming too fickle. Self-imposed self discipline is needed here in liberal doses if required to boost the cleverness with perseverance and determination. Okay, so let's go back to the example of the bonsai or the plant that you represent, you know, like this photo here. Obviously, I mean, 
growing in a pot, you will not be able to expand horizontally. Therefore, logically, the only way left is up. Right? Like a vine latching onto a building, a tree or a stake to climb closer to the sun, the yi yo is naturally attracted to the limelight and most of all, to successful people. This strategic approach will mean that people tend to wander in and out of your orbit, depending on the role they play in your current plans. You know, be okay with that. However, this ability of the yi yo to prop itself up by relying on other elements is exactly what strategic networking is all about. Okay, so let's clear a common misconception about uh, networking here, right? Networking is not an insincere or manipulative way to elegantly use people. It's about creating a web of personal contacts who provide the feedback, support, information, Mm, what else? Resources and insight that all of us need to grow. Now, this discomfort, the mic just fell down, okay? This discomfort around strategic networking is perfectly understandable. <clears throat> Society has taught us to rise through the ranks by dint of task based accomplishments. Strategic networking requires relational instead of transactional tasks. So, strategic networking is more than just a mutual case of uh, mutual back scratching, all right? Instead, um, the business world has literally identified three distinct but interdependent forms of networking. Operational, personal, and strategic. So, operational uh, networking, which is uh, right here, is the most common form of networking. This is about uh, how you get your job done. The depth and scope of this uh, network can differ, but includes, well, uh, let me see, direct reports, superiors, your peers, your staff, other internal forces, other departments uh, that can either expedite or block a project. Uh, there could be also outside forces like customers, distributors, suppliers, all, right, all these kind of guys. The purpose of this network, as mentioned, is to get things done. It is not concerned with what should be done. All of us have operational networks. These relationships are based on the tasks required and tend to be constrained by the job at hand. So in a part of coaching, when we start talking about the need to expand on networking, many people will automatically assume that they should improve on their operational network. But for the coaching session to take effect, as a person grows, his or her network needs to be recalibrated externally and become more future-oriented, which leads us to the next point. Okay. The second group, the personal networking group, comprises of uh, professional associations, uh, maybe your alumni, clubs, uh, personal interest communities through which you can gain new perspectives that allows you to advance in your career, which uh, begs the question, why should you pre uh, waste precious time on an activity that is not directly related to with what you need to do after all? There's barely enough time in the day to clear your own deck. So this personal network is where the bulk of your developmental support. Think uh, coaching or mentoring, information and referrals. This is where they'll come from. Remember the, the, the uh, idea of uh, the six degrees of separation, the theory of the six degrees of separation? This is what the personal network is all about. It is composed of acquaintances with whom we have something in common. This personal network forms the base for the next and ultimate step, which is strategic networking. So this uh, final stage is comprised of lateral and vertical relationships, so up and down, okay, with people outside of our immediate control. The role of this network is to figure out how our own contributions fit into the big picture. So at this stage, the task of the strategic network is to help formulate broad business objectives. It is no longer concerned about functional objectives. The value of being plugged into a strategic network is to get keyed in on shifting business trends. 
So strategic networking is about influence, the ability to leverage the resources, information and support from one sector of the network to achieve results in another. Instead of merely influencing your environment, the smart strategic networker strives to mold it to become favorable to your own goals. Okay, so the topic of uh, strategic networking is very closely related to the topic of noble persons in the study of Bazi. Uh, at the end of the day, it's about the same thing really. Someone coming to you with information or resource you need to move you one step closer to your goal. So with or without the EO in, the, in your chart, this is a skill that can be learned to start, learn to serve. Remember, strategic networking is a two-way street. In order to get, to get, you must first give. So if you want to know if you are a EO day master, I've got the free plotter link in the description. Right? If you've got a question, drop it in the comments. Otherwise, thank you for staying with me. I know this has been a pretty long video. Until next time, if you enjoyed this sharing, please like and subscribe.